Good morning. Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. So excited all of you woke up with me. It is 4 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 3 a.m. Central Standard Time, 10 a.m. over in West, uh, we're in Nigeria. And I don't know what time zone you are, but always appreciate it that all of you decided to sacrifice some sleep so that we can cry out to God and just watch him do great and mighty things. I am very excited about this fast. Um, it has just been so powerful. Let's just, before we get started, just lift up a, just lift up a shout of praise before God. Let's give God the sacrifice of praise this morning and just give him your thanksgiving. Uh, you know, Psalms 100 verse 4, the message version is my favorite. It said, don't enter without the secret password. Thank you. And so before we come to God and we bombard heaven for our prayer requests and to see breakthrough in certain areas of our lives, Let's give God the sacrifice of praise, which means that, you know, a lot of us are praising and thanking God for what he did, but some of us need to just thank God for what he's about to do. And so let's give God a thanksgiving offering for what he hasn't done yet, but what we know for sure he's going to do because he's not a man that he would lie. Open up your mouth and let's give God the praise.
warfare tool against the enemy because it gets your mind off of the problem and puts your mind back on God. And um, and it just it, it, you're acting in faith. And what we know, what we've learned is that faith is the currency of the kingdom. And so it's like you're trying to do works to pay God to get your blessings to come to you. But he's like, forget your works. I want faith. Like take out your faith is like money. And when you pay God in faith, that's when the blessings pour in. So keep that in mind as you continue to pray and thank God for something you may not see yet, you don't know what's happening in the realm of the spirit. Everything is being torn apart while you thank God for something you can't see yet. So please understand it's a very powerful weapon against uh, the kingdom of darkness. Welcome to our March fast. I'm very excited about this. Just a few uh, updates. We do not eat any food from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. We drink only water. I know it seems like a very long time not to eat anything. Uh, however, you will not die, but your flesh will. I get a lot of people that ask me a lot of questions like, well, Tiffany, you know, you may say you're on medication or things of that nature. Obviously, I'm not your doctor. Please consult with them. That's just my dis my disclaimer I'm calling out there. But when you really do a study of fasting, please, y'all, don't let these corporate fasts be the only study you get in. Start studying um, prayer and fasting, not intermittent fasting, not fasting for diet only. I'm talking about the spiritual implications of fasting. It is a powerful, dynamic tool of God that he gave us. And um, and if you want to be free from sickness, if you want to break the spirit of infirmity, fasting is the way to do that. So what I'm saying is, obviously, again, I'm not your doctor. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your case is, right? So I can't speak on that. But what I am saying is that uh, fasting and prayer together will kill that spirit of infirmity that is trying to plague you. So just use the wisdom of God, especially during a time of fasting. Ask God for revelation so that you're not making your medicine your God and allowing your medicine to dictate what you do. Now, obviously, you can eat before 6 a.m. and you can eat after 6 p.m. So maybe you can, and again, I don't know what your situation is, maybe you can't do this, so then I'm not talking to you. But if you can, take whatever you got to take before 6 a.m., take it after 6 p.m., um, and things of that nature. But what I want to make sure is that you have not made your sickness or your medicine an idol to God, where now you consider it before you do anything. You know, the Bible says, God said in the Bible, consider me in all your ways, and I will direct your path. Isn't it funny how we can see a scripture that says, consider me or acknowledge me, acknowledge me in all your ways, and that word means consider, and I will direct your path. And a lot of you are trying to figure out, why isn't my path directed? Why do I feel like you know, I don't know what to do next, and I'm always confused, and you don't know what to do next. When's the last time you acknowledged God in all of your ways? When is the last time you considered him? But yet you're on the fast, and you're considering your medicine. You've considered your sickness. You've considered your job. Tiffany, well, I work. How can I? You've considered your workout, right? And you've allowed that to direct your path. So, again, no judgment from me here, but I wanted to open up this door of revelation to you for you to see why your prayers might be hindered, why they're not getting answered, and why you're not, why God doesn't seem like he's directing your path. It's not that he didn't hear you. He told you what to consider so that you get that prayer answered, and what you keep considering is everything that's not God. Keep that in mind. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., absolutely no food, water only. You won't die, but your flesh will. You will find that your flesh begins to rage at you. It will get angrier at you than normal. Uh, you might not even eat breakfast, but now that your body knows you're on a fast, it's going to buck up at you at 9 o'clock in the morning and it's like, feed me. Don't give in. Your flesh has been God, lowercase g, in your life for a very long time. And what you're doing is you're giving God his rightful dominion back in your life. You're giving him the rule, the reign, and the dominion back over uh, over your life. You are dethroning your flesh, and you are enthroning God back in that position. So your flesh is going to rage at you. Your skin might break out. You may begin to have body odor. 
um, your tongue gets white. Like these are, these are signs that your body are detoxing. You're going to get headaches, especially if you're not drinking coffee and you're taking out all sugar for these next three days. Headaches are going to come, right? It, and you're going to feel like, well, maybe I just need to, I need to, I need to shoot up on crack. I mean, sugar to get this headache to go away. Your body is expelling out of it what was trying to give it a disease three years from now. Your body is expelling out of it what was what what you didn't recognize was getting ready to kill it in seven years or in three months. And so please recognize this. Keep your spiritual eyes open. Stop looking at all of this from the flesh. This is not your flesh talking to you. It is the spirit. This is the spiritual world you're engaging in during a time of fasting. You may get angrier during a fast. You may say, well, Tiff, I am like the nicest person in the world, but when I fast with you, all hell breaks loose. I am the angriest person in the world. Listen, there are certain demons that lie dormant in your bloodline for generations, right? They lie dormant. For you, it might be the spirit of uh, anger. For somebody else, when they fast, they get hornier. And they're like, man, you're very sexually aroused. You're not normally this way. Why does it happen when you open up your Bible? Why does it happen when you begin to fast? It's because this demonic spirit is laying dormant until you get promoted somewhere so that it can ruin your life. This demonic spirit is lying dormant until you get married, and then it's going to manifest. Until you have children, and then it's going to manifest. Until you get higher in ministry, and you have all eyes on you, and then it's going to manifest. And so what God is doing during this time of fasting is he's saying, hey, you might not see the spirit of anger because you thought you you dealt with it, but during this time of fasting, I'm going to let it rise up to the top. I'm going to let it bubble over so that you can deal with it. This is not to say you're a bad Christian. This is to say that God is so much in love with you that he exposed the plans of the enemy so that you can deal with it. So just keep in mind, anytime you see anger or sexual arousal or perversion or all of a sudden you want to masturbate or all of a sudden um, you want to gossip or whatever your thing is, keep in mind that this is this is God showing you what it is so you can cancel this at the root and you're not dealing with it anymore. So hopefully that makes sense. Also, you know, be very clear that the people that you haven't heard from in forever is going to call you during these next few days and really piss you off. That's just how that works because the enemy knows that his time is up. So what I'm saying is keep your spiritual eyes open. Keep your flesh. Do not get mad at these people. Do not feed into them. Don't argue back with them. Understand this as a trap of the enemy. And the enemy wants you to go back to these people. They want, he wants you to fall again. He wants you to um, feel discouraged that you really messed up and you done cursed somebody out and you thought you were saved for 10 years. Don't fall for it. Laugh at it. Like, behind the scenes, just laugh like, you know what, I, you're definitely not going to get me mad because I know I haven't heard from you in the weeks, months, years. And you think I'm going to mess up my breakthrough that I'm going to get in the month of March, especially when Tiffany's been prophesying stuff and it's been coming to pass? I think not. So don't fall for it, y'all. We have a breakthrough coming through, and the enemy is pissed off, and he is trying everything in his power to throw everything at you so that you can go back into agreement with your past, and we're not going there. Welcome to the Prayer for Salvation. This is simply a video I've put together where I'd like to pray for anyone within the sound of my voice. All I ask you to do is to agree with me as we seek our Father God. Choosing to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior is the most important decision you will ever make. Remember, it's not about how you feel after you pray. When the Bible says it, that settles it, and God promises to save you when you ask. God's word promises, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. By his grace, God has already done everything to provide salvation for you, regardless of your past. Your part is to simply believe and receive. So the very moment you commit your life to Jesus Christ, the truth of his word instantly comes to pass in your spirit. And when you're born again, there's a brand new you. Pray out loud after me. Jesus, I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. I believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. By faith in your word, I receive salvation now. Thank you for saving me. I am now reborn. I am a Christian, a child of Almighty God. I am saved. Thank you, Jesus.